just bless the name of the Lord. My Jesus presence in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Just bless him. Bless him in other tongues. He's faithful. Bless his name. Down at your feet, O oh Lord, is the most high place. In your presence, Lord, I see your face. I see your face. Can you sing it one more time? Down at your feet. At your feet, oh Lord, in your presence, in your presence, Lord, I seek your face.
Praise the Lord. Please walk to ten people and just greet them. Ten people. to see and to know to comprehend spiritual things. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity. Lord, we bless you. Now the spirit of the living God are not ashamed to declare how helpless we are without you. You are the fountain of wisdom. It's in your light that we see light. Bless the name of the Lord for His glorious presence in this place. The presence that can change. You have changed the stories of people. Lord, day and night we hear testimonies of the hand of God. The wonder-working power. You have made sinners to come into the fold. Many have been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. You have anointed men and women. You have broken habits. You have broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. You have opened for us the two leaf gates and caused us to walk in freedom. See what you've done with our lives, O God. You have taken the ordinary things you have made wonders out of our lives Lord we acknowledge the way you transform people in this place it's mighty can only happen by the spirit you're giving many testimonies of transformation, healing definition of their lives you are setting men apart for the things that you will be doing Lord we bless you we bless you we bless you we bless you These are not the works of men. It is the presence of the living God walking in the midst of His people. And so we choose to say thank you. Hallelujah. I bless your name. And I pray that tonight it will not be different. Change somebody. Your people have come from their homes, from other states. Except you help us tonight, we cannot help ourselves. But we trust the power of your spirit, that great spirit of the living God. Open to us the bread of the spirit. Grant us access into the deep things of God. Let the word equip us, prepare us, separate us, Make a wonder out of our lives. We are available. We give you all the praise for the glory of your name. That Jesus will be glorified in our lives. We are not interested in shadows. We want the substance. You are worthy, worthy of my praise. You are the King of kings. Lord of lords, this is our prayer, Lord. Let your kingdom reign in my life.
into a holy place. Just soak in His glory for a minute. His mighty presence. God is healing, healing sicknesses. The healing anointing in this place.
Shalom, Shalom, Jerusalem. Hey, I prophesy peace to you. I prophesy peace to you. When Messiah comes to take us home, may his praise be found. In you, I speak to every storm in this place. Shalom, Shalom, Jerusalem. Peace be to you. Now that Messiah is in this place. He's come to take it away. Let his praise be found in you. I'm prophesying to you. Shalom. Shalom. Koinonia. The bride of Christ. Peace be to you. Peace be to you. Let this be a place of peace. Let it be a place of power. Let it be a place of breakthrough. Let it be a place of intimacy. You may not realize what has happened to you. have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, Jehovah. We have touched the end of ourselves. Take over now, Jehovah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. So take over, take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Can you personalize it? Take over, Lord. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. We have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Lots of voices. Sing it from your heart. Come on. Take over. Take over. Lord, we have come to the end of ourselves. Take over. When you come to the end of yourself, then you will see His glory. It's a powerful song of dedication. You will always rejoice when you come to the end of yourself. That's when flesh dies and you release the spirit. Take over. Lord, we have come to the end of ourselves. Take over. Take over. We have come. about to share in these few minutes, I pray from my heart that it will change you and set you on fire. I pray that it will change you. I pray that it will change you. And do something remarkable in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's get to the word of God. Bless you. It's good to have everyone around. Make sure you have something to write. The presence of God is mighty in this place. Hallelujah. I want to teach on something very powerful. I want to share with you a very big secret tonight. And for as many who will consider it to be valuable I pray that many years from now it will make you a sign and a wonder because I am aware by now that not everybody is really interested in the things of the spirit just leave her alone hallelujah there will be a lot of impartations tonight because of what I'm about to teach hallelujah I want you to be sensitive Open your eyes, will you open your ears, and then you'll understand that His presence is here. Open your eyes, if you open your ears, then you'll understand. Hallelujah. I want to teach tonight on the price for an extraordinary anointing. Never, never trivialize what you are about to hear. I'm here to preach my heart to you tonight. And I pray that somebody will take this seriously. May this message set somebody on fire. May this message answer the question somebody's heart the price for an extraordinary anointing Hmm. hallelujah I've always wondered why certain people in this life seemed to be unusually extraordinary. Hallelujah. Why certain sportsmen were better than others. Why certain musicians and artists were better than others. Why certain preachers, men and women of God, What brought the power and the anointing of the Spirit so mightily upon their lives? When you read through church history, you will see 
an archive of men that walked like gods upon the earth. Now there were others who did nice, great things, little things here and there. But there were others who were too extraordinary to be neglected. They shook cities single-handedly. There was, there was such a degree of the demonstration of the Holy Spirit upon their lives. Hallelujah. And I made up my mind years ago that my life was not going to be extraordinary. My life was not going to be normal. Sorry. I made up my mind years ago that I was going to live an extremely extraordinary life. Hallelujah. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if you have done these things with the people that have gone ahead of us, and yet you said there is a generation that will do more, I want to be that generation. Every time I picked up my Bible and I read the things that the Word of God said would happen, He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he also do and greater works. And I carried my Bible and said, Lord, do you really mean this? Hallelujah. And I began to study the life of extraordinary people. I have spent a major part of my life studying extraordinary people in every area of life. Every area. Finance, ministry, leadership. What made them so extraordinary? Because I don't want to be a mediocre. Jesus was born in a manger. But when he was leaving heaven, there was a crowd to celebrate his departure. And I'm very disturbed, and I must say this, at the complacency that is upon especially preachers in the body of Christ. There is a very low standard that many men and women of God, especially around this country, have set for themselves. There is no pressure to go the extra mile and do amazing things for the kingdom. Hallelujah. When I listen to certain preachers, the presence of God that came out of their lives were amazing. It was compelling. You could not deny that these people knew the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Very, very powerful. And one time I listened to William Branham. When I listened to his message, I was shaking. And the Holy Spirit told me, Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. What kind of anointing did men like Elisha carry that although they were dead, a dead body meandered that place and suddenly jacked up. Are there such people in the earth today? Are you listening to me? Am I challenging somebody? For desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing in. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing on. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. Help me sing. There's gotta be more than this. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. Cause I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. Listen, there's got to be more than what we are watching on our television. Are you listening to me? There's got to be more than what we celebrate as ministry and power today. There's got to be more. This cannot be all of God. Certain people have become examples to let us know that there are possibilities that are obtained in God. It's just that the standard is high. 
The Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He lives in the hill and whoever will climb there will access some things. He said he shall receive a reward from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. I studied Ezekiel 47 and it challenged me. The Bible says, out of the east side of the temple, a river came out. And he said, an angel measured a thousand cubits. And it was to my ankles. That's a level. That's a measure of the anointing. But he didn't stop there. He said he measured another thousand cubits. And then it was to my knees. And the man would have chosen to stop there, but he said, I will go for more. And he measured a thousand cubits. And he was to his loins. And he said, although this is great, by now you are a celebrity, you are on every television, but he said there is still more. And the Bible says he measured a thousand cubits. And it was a river. A, an overflowing river. And the Bible says wherever that river went, the fish that was dead would come alive. Hallelujah. My anthem every time is that there is more. There is more. If you are a lukewarm person who does not have any pressure to press, you won't be my friend. You won't like me. My life will offend you. The price for an extraordinary anointing. I made certain vows with my life. That I was going to leave a mark upon this earth. Before I go to be with the Lord or He comes to find me working. I made up my mind that I was not just going to be that preacher with a nice congregation. And just having people. And join the rat race of preachers fighting themselves and doing things as if the anointing has finished. Quarreling and writing things about them. No! That kind of life is for people who have refused to press higher. Hallelujah. See, let me tell you something. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's energy. The anointing is God's ability to do work. Just like in physics, we define energy or we define power as the ability to do work per time. That's the definition of the anointing. The power of the Holy Ghost resident in a man that causes the man to produce extraordinary results. The Bible says in Isaiah 20, 10, 27, it says, it shall come to pass in that day. Which day? The day you are interested enough to enter that dimension with the Spirit. That the burden shall be lifted from off thy neck and the yoke from thy shoulder and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. There are many preachers that go into ministry without the anointing. Many people trying to work for God. Many people trying to be great without the anointing. You have no ministry without the anointing. The anointing of the Spirit is God's agency. His ability that can be resident in a man. Causing that man to do extraordinary things. And if that ability is not in you, you cannot pretend it's there when it's not there. Because it speaks. Hallelujah. Every time I watch television, I get blessed, but I get disturbed in my spirit. When I see the satisfaction that is upon men of God as they preach, in my mind I'm saying, is this, was this the whole vision that they saw when they began with God? If no, what happened on the way? And then one time the Lord began to speak to me about the extraordinary anointing. And the Lord told me something that shocked me. He said, son, it is not up to me. It is entirely up to you to determine how far you want to go in the anointing. Many people think it's just God. He brings it whenever he wants. And if God likes you, he will just give it to you. If anybody has preached that to you, I'm telling you right now, right now, that is not true. Psalms 89 says, I have found my servant David. He had to make himself available. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. Hallelujah. Every time we watch extraordinary people. During the Olympics. The attention of the whole world were on a few. 
who did extraordinary things. Their age, their gender, their race, their background, notwithstanding. The world has always stood in honor of extraordinary people. Ordinary people have not done anything to the world. When they give people Nobel Prize, it's because they did extraordinary things. Hallelujah. And I want to challenge you tonight that there is a dimension in God that you can press into and you will access not just an anointing, an extraordinary anointing. There are many people who claim to be prophets in this country and you see that they, they are really called but they have not contended to those dimensions in God. They are prophets who look like pastors or deacons. No pressure to contend for the deep things of the Spirit. I was studying the Gospels and I started crying. You know why I cried? Because in Bible times, all people needed to do was to locate Jesus Christ or any environment where He was around. Whether or not they would be healed was not the issue. They knew that once they saw Jesus Christ, that was it. Powerful dimension of grace. At what level in the church will people say, all I need to do, take me to that place. When I get there, I will find God. When I get there, no matter what the problem is, there must be a solution. Right now, to get to a place where a man of God is, is only the first question answered. The second question is to hope. Hope that at least God will attend to me. And every time this is my cry, I say, Lord, don't send me if I'm going to be an ordinary person. Hallelujah. Someone spoke to me one day and said, Josh, I think you need to go on air. I said, me? I will never go on air until I have a message for the body of Christ. Are you hearing me? I'm not going to go on air and have somebody scroll my channel and say, wow, He's a nice man of God next. No, no, no. There's got to be something extraordinary. This is what I, I made up my mind. That we'll never officially begin to record Koinonia messages until there was something that was substantial enough for the body of Christ to have. There are many people writing books and tapes that are empty. They have no power and no ability. They are just psychological jargons. No power to change people. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Bible says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says that he had the spirit without measure. And he went about doing good. And healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. Acts 10.38 I made up my mind that I was going to explore. See, can I tell you the truth? As far as I'm concerned, I've not started ministry yet. I feel very sad when I see a lot of people. They don't say I've been five years in ministry, seven years. I tell them, keep quiet. What is ministry? Ministry is representing God, being an ambassador. How much? What have you done? What mark have you made? When I begin ministry, the world will know. The Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Many people just get up, they start churches, they gather people, they have no message, they have no nothing. What do you have that has not been heard before? The Bible says there is a path which no fowl knoweth and a path which the feet of the lion has not trodden. Many men of God, what is happening in this country is just a repetition, copy and paste of spiritual things. There is no new. But the Bible says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. See, behold, I do a new thing. Hallelujah. Nelson Mandela became sick and he kept the world at a standstill. Christians, non-Christian, and everybody was praying. When Obama came, he had to go and visit him. Listen, this is, this is amazing. What made him an extraordinary leader? My, my first challenge for you tonight 
is that you must refuse to be ordinary in life. I want to challenge you. You must refuse. It's a determination. It's a decision. I refuse to be extraordinary. Call it pride. I don't care. Hallelujah. There is a level where you can get hold of an extraordinary anointing. It will produce an extraordinary ministry. It will produce an extraordinary life. Kenneth Hagin of blessed memory. A man who lived an extraordinary life. He had such a, a mighty anointing upon him. William Branham. I watched the video of Jaco. And they brought a lady who had cancer. Are you following me now? It was, it was a growth. It was swollen. I watched it. It's not like they told me. This guy held it and peeled it away. He was even sitting on a chair. He held it, peeled the cancer away. No blood. He was showing people. What is our boasting? What is our bragging for? I made up my mind I will never officially celebrate my birthday until I have a reason to celebrate. Birthdays is not a celebration of the day you were born. It was a celebration of, for what you are doing, what you were called to do, what you are living for. Are you listening to me? When I watch the videos of these people, I, I get broken. Mighty men! William Branham would move and because of the degree of anointing that was upon him, a hollow will move together with him. Ketun Kuman was so full of the Holy Ghost. She carried the anointing to a point that one time on stage she had crossed the stage yet she was still floating. She didn't even realize it. Who through faith subdued kingdoms? Who are these men? Who are these strange breed of people that defied the ordinary status quo of their days and told themselves they were going to press. The difference between extraordinary, listen to me please, the difference between extraordinary and ordinary is that word, extra. Hallelujah. Every time I want to counsel people, I just say, Lord, are these people going to gather and I'll just waste their time. Or will they really receive something? Can I tell you something? The body of Christ is so frustrated. Many people are frustrated. Because preachers make a lot of mouth about things they have no anointing to defend. Hallelujah. A lot of preachers come and we brag and we make all kinds of noise. Oh, if God doesn't heal you, you don't have faith. Blah, 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 blah. And now the sick people come and they go back. And then they run to herbalists. And we have, we carry our big mouths and we criticize them. When the herbalist in a village is doing what a preacher has refused to do. And people are desperate for help. They will do anything. Including leaving your church or your ministry. And they will find solutions. Are you listening to me? Jesus climbed the mountain. A crowd followed him there. Jesus went to the wilderness. A crowd followed him there. He was in a room. The Bible says a whole city came and filled there. Men who knew that they were going to get substance. There is a lot of wastage happening in the body of Christ. Men and women of God just joking around and playing around. And the, the circumference of all what we call anointing. The moment a man of God's dream is to get to the point where you can touch somebody or blow air and somebody falls. It's enough demonstration to people that you are anointed. People fall down, get up and clean themselves. Nothing changes. Hallelujah. There are certain meetings in my life. I entered some of those meetings just once, but I will never forget. Hallelujah. Never forget. T.L. Osborne entered only one meeting. One meeting of William Branham. Just one. And it set him on fire forever. Just one. I told God, I said, Lord, the deadline for transformation in any life in Koinonia is two meetings. Two meetings. Every time I pray, I said, Lord, let it not be that somebody will come for Koinonia at least twice. 
and not be changed. And you ask the person, how was service? They say, wow, it was nice. But that somebody will come and at the end of it, he cannot even talk. The person is just on his way going and you're saying, what happened? He said, I can't, I can't begin to describe. The impartation, I don't know if it was impartation I got or revelation I got. I don't know. I know that I got something. You'll be like a snake that swallowed something else. It can't move until after some days where you know that God is in this place. There are people seated here who are sick. There are people who are oppressed. And we men of God feel it's not an issue. And, and you know, shame on we preachers to an extent that whenever you see people being delivered and free, men of God begin to get angry and criticize. This is how much we are not even interested in the agenda of God. Someone gets free, someone gets delivered. See, let me tell you something. I made up my mind. The Bible says, he who walks with the wise shall be what? He who walks with the great shall be what? He who walks with the extraordinary shall be what? I love everybody, but I will not follow everybody. I am determined to make sure that a lot will be done for the kingdom of God in my lifetime. This is why there is no satisfaction. I've had one or two awards that were given to me. You will never find them on my table. Those things are deceitful. Very deceitful. Award that a few people just came together and said, take, you did this and that. You now place it and you are smiling and it's lying to you. See, when I was in secondary school, it was in a local government where, you know, many people were not even serious with their studies. So we're the best, we're the best school in that local government. What we call local champion. If we came for debate in your school, just start crying. By that standard. Hallelujah. Until we made up our minds one day to visit a school that was used to competing with people going state by state. That day, they showed us that the ceiling of somebody else can be the foundation of the next building. Hallelujah. When I came back, listen, when I came back from that debate, I was ashamed of myself. I ran to the state library. I had been the best student in my class until I tried writing jam maths. After five hours, I got four. Four. One, two, three, four. I checked the back of Jam brochure. And they said there were certain people that got 300 and something. I said, Joshua Selma, you are joking. Many of us have lived in circles that have lied to us too much. We think the whole world is like our little community. Hallelujah. That's how many men of God are. They, they have surrounded themselves by with psychophants and liars who make them feel they have every anointing in the world. Then one day you go and try something that you don't have grace for and you receive a root shock. Then you begin to say, it's not true. This thing didn't work for me. Anybody that is doing it is not of God. This is fake. Shut up. That you are lazy and you are not pressing does not mean everybody has refused to press. There are people who will not stop. Are you listening to me? The price for an extraordinary anointing there can be more than what you have seen. There can be more. There can be more. Many of us stopped pursuing God the day somebody fell down under the anointing. You don't know whether it was you or it was the person's prayer. You just know it happened around you. From that day, you were convinced. Whenever you go for meetings and they are ministering to people, you are waiting for them to say, ministers, come and lay hands. They say, ministers, you get up. What do you have? What do you have? How many? How many of it? He said, listen. He said, what do you have in your house? 
He said, I won't lie, I have something, but it's little. Sometimes you need to accept that you have, but what you have is not enough. The woman said, I have oil, but it's in a small cruise. The prophet said, all right, let me show you something that can expand the oil for you. She never would have believed that there can be more. Hallelujah. I get very, very, I get very disturbed when I see people go for meetings. And to worsen the case, you want to see the disorganization of men of God wait until the anointing begins to break out in the meeting. Every man of God's body is itching him. Everybody wants to hold the mic. God has not finished, so just wait. There, there, are, there are some people there at the back, at the back. All these, all these things we are doing. For 10 minutes you are talking. You are just, it's like starting a generator. Go and sit down. There are certain people, Catherine Kuman, before she got to the venue of the meeting, kilometers away, people started falling under the anointing. This is how they knew Catherine Kuman was coming. One time she finished the meeting and they were pressing her and they had to follow her through a kitchen door. The moment they opened the door, all the chefs, all of them were under the anointing until she passed. She was not praying. This was her default state. Hallelujah. Am I challenging you tonight? Sometimes when people call me to come and minister, as soon as I finish the ministration, I don't even want to hear any comments because I have to run. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I've left Nigeria. I will not be fooled. The future of ENI is in that letter I, international. If you think what we have now is enough to feed the world, go and sit down. How many of you have seen people produce poster? And when you are seeing it on the laptop, you think that's the best poster you have produced. It's when you print it out and paste it, you see that it's as ordinary as the ones around. I refuse to be ordinary. There is a realm in God. Listen, can I tell you, when you hit that realm, you will start resting. You have entered the Sabbath of greatness. You will rest. Until you get to the seventh day, do not rest. I'm going to share with you four keys. Number one, This is not what I'm just preaching. These are keys that I've made up my mind that they'll be part of my life. Can I tell you something? Look at me. God is challenging some of you tonight. Some of you have not backslided, but you have, not, you have stopped growing. You've not backslided, but you are, there are many preachers in Nigeria that have stopped growing. They've not gone back, but they are in the same realm for a long time. It's just because where they have gotten to is, is substantially great. And it has been able to achieve one or two things. May your life produce a wonder that the world has not seen. May your life be the vehicle that God will reveal the more part of Him that many people have not seen. Number one, you want to have an extraordinary anointing. The first price to pay is the price of consecration. The price of consecration. I will run very fast. Joshua 3 verse 5. The price of consecration. You don't hear this message is preached in church. Many people don't care. When I talk of consecration, I'm not just talking about run away from ladies. No, no, no. That's not even what I'm talking about. Consecration. To consecrate means to set apart. Consecration requires absolute surrender. Joshua 3 verse 5. Joshua 3 verse 5. If you want the Lord to do mighty things through your life, can we read it? One to read. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. If you do that, what will happen? 
Tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. You want to see wonders in your life? The first key is the price of consecration. Consecration requires absolute surrender. Everybody say absolute surrender. You will never have the extraordinary anointing when you have your own agenda. You just want to use God's anointing to do your own agenda. Uh -uh. When God calls you, his first assignment is to kill you. You die to yourself, to your ambitions. Listen, you do not know the degree of surrender that brings authentic power and anointing. How many of you remember that gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim? Some of you will remember him. He was right here in Koinonia. This guy wanted to be, he was in a group called Highlanders in Port Harcourt. Very serious occultic group. And he wanted the power of invincibility. He wanted to be able to do great things. When he met the Habalist, the Habalist told him, you have to consecrate yourself. For three days and three nights, he was lying down in a graveyard. His eyes did not see any man. I'm telling you how the devil gives people power. Three days, he said in the night, he will see people come out of graves and move. And you were not supposed to shift. They will touch him. He said, many of you do not know that the anointing comes with a price. That's why you see, when you talk against a man who is truly anointed, whether you are right or wrong, God will punish you. Are you listening to me? Absolute surrender. Consecration requires enduring the pain of being different. Oh, it's painful to be different. Let me tell you. It's painful to ride a different, a different plane of life. When everybody is going this way. When this is their definition of success. Moses was in the backside for 40 years. When his age mates were ruling in Egypt, he left the luxury of Egypt to prepare for an extraordinary ministry. Forty years! At the end of it, he came back to Egypt. He said, I'm ready. Oh, you can know you are ready. And it will not be pride. You can know you are ready. There is a time called the season of appearance. Are you, are you listening to me? Years ago, I hope I'll be able to share a few stories today about myself. Years ago, when I started preparing, when the Lord showed me the visions of the extraordinary things I'll be doing, in my mind I said, Lord, will people believe these things? And then the Lord began, sometimes the Lord will hold me in a room. Three days have not come out. My eyes have not seen the light. Three days. I would stay there just praying. Sometimes sleeping, I will wake up and I will lie down. And a mist, like a cloud, will literally come into the room. By the shape of a man. A real mist, I'm not talking of some metaphysics hallucination. If you are seeing it, you are seeing it. If it's like it is not there, you are either seeing it. This is Sam. This is music director. Hallelujah. I had very strange experiences. And I knew that this was a preparation for an extraordinary ministry. Many of you, this is what has been happening to you. Hallelujah. But nobody has told you. They've not encouraged you to know. Are you, are you listening to me? Many of you, you don't even know. And you are not serious because you started joining people. You now want to run and go and start a church or a fellowship. You've not even done anything. Ella, you'll be my secretary. Matilda, you'll be the PA. You are the one who will bath me. You are the one who will dress me. You will be going to the restaurant for me. Say, God gave me a commission. He said, now my son, arise and raise me a generation. Sit down. He said, arise from his perspective. See, let me tell you something about the word of God. God speaks from the realm of eternity. Everybody say eternity. He speaks from the realm of eternity. There is no time. So when the word comes to you, it comes with such a strong urgency, you think you should get up and go immediately. You must sit down and find the time component of every prophecy. That's why when prophets heard from God, they said, according to the time of life. Are, are you following me? 
Thank you, Jesus. It's painful to stand out. Listen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's painful to stand out. It's painful to be unusual. It's painful to be controversial. If you are not ready, forget about an extraordinary anointing. These are strange and rare people. That's why many people cannot make it to that list. They are too conscious of themselves. You must die to yourself to carry an extraordinary anointing. They will talk about you. They, we are speaking about Satan and Jesus at the same time. Two extremes. No matter, you will have to be in between two of them. Different in your life. Different in your mindset. There are ways they do things in your house. Now you make up your mind and say, no way. These sacrifices and this idolatry and the rest, count me out. This is not going to be part of my life. I'm preparing for an extraordinary life. And people look at you. Say, so this thing has been there for how many years? Until the reward comes, you will look foolish. So let it not be strange to you. Shafalata katabra. When you get to this realm, you will die to yourself. Literally. Everybody say the price of consecration. Many people do not like this. You know what? See, one of the biggest problems with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, especially the American church, and now it's coming into Nigeria, we love comfort too much. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit is called the comforter. But listen, I need you to know that any sensible man knows that you don't get comfort from day one. When they give birth to a child, the first thing he receives is a slap. That's a sign to show that he's alive. Are you hearing me? Many people want pampering. We have built churches that want pampering. You say something that is striking. People say, we don't like this kind of preaching. No? We'll stop sowing into this ministry. And the man of God said, alright, we'll, we'll, we'll think of how to, to arrange it. May Koinonia never become the place that will water down truth because we are looking for money. Hallelujah. Everybody say the price of consecration. Before David was anointed, Psalm 89 said, I have found. Do you know what it means for God to find a man? The psalmist said, where can we hide from your presence? Yet God is saying, finally I found you. Because many people just want comfort. We want to use the anointing of God to accomplish our own agenda. And so the first thing is you must die to yourself and die to your agenda. I was listening to Benny Hinn. He was talking to some youths. And he was telling them, he said, look, you people do not know the price that brought this level of anointing to my life. He said, I don't know the, name of, the names of footballers. I don't know the names of music artists. He said one time his son asked him to take him to a basketball place. He said when he got there and he saw people jumping, he could not understand what they were enjoying. The anointing will change you. It will make you strange. People will say, you didn't used to be like this. Where has your social life gone to? What happened? You will find it in the future. Give it up now. There are pastors who do visitation from Sunday to Sunday. Even Sunday morning, they quickly visit a rich man's house before they run to church. And then they believe that they are going to get an extraordinary ministry. And then many people now want methods. Young Cho went to preach somewhere. He pastors one of the largest churches in the world. Hallelujah. And many Americans just started out with their notepad. They believe he was going to give them 31 guaranteed methods. You know, this is what we like now. Do this. Add A to B to C. This will happen. Young Gicho came up. He doesn't speak English too well. Paraphrasing. He said, you people don't pray. You are not serious. You just sit down. You want the anointing. And he went and sat down. That was the end of his message. It was a prophetic rebuke. Authentic, prophetic, Bible type, prophetic rebuke. 
Hallelujah. That was the message. He who had an ear in that meeting should hear and go back to the secret place. We like methods. Right now we read all kinds of psychological books. Unbelievers are writing books to govern church ministry. How to attract a crowd. 20 quick ways. Guaranteed. And many gullible men of God who are lazy just get up. You see them watching CDs. You would think it's something that will provoke them. A motivational speaker sits down. He says, when you come, start with a story. When you start with a story, use an example. When you do that, do this and that. You tried it, it didn't work because you are in Nigeria. Everybody says, Nigeria. Nigerians have not been trained to tolerate nonsense. We are coming out from witchcraft, straight. We are looking for something authentic. You don't come and tell people these jargons and junk. They will manage it for two days. They will laugh. We'll, we'll. When it gets bad, they will call you and say, Pastor, I saw the seed. I prayed. It's not working. If you don't respond to me by next week, you will see me in your church again. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Listen. Every great man knows that you must give up something to go up. Did you hear what I'm saying? You must give up something to go up. Politicians know this. By 1 a.m., you are sleeping. A politician is in a herbalist house just to get little political office. What has made the body of Christ so lazy? I believe in seed trade. But let me tell you the truth. If you want an extraordinary life, it's beyond money. Are you listening to me? It's even beyond impartation. A time will come you must dig your own well. Your customized dealing with the spirit. When you get it, you will know those who are having what is not it. If you are the best student in your class and you see the dullest student getting 99, you know something happened. Because you know what you are doing that makes you the best. Hallelujah. Many believers cannot detect error because they themselves have not entered the substance. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Revelations 18 verse 4. Revelations 18 verse 4. Powerful statement. He said, Come out of her, my people, that you will not partake of her sins, that her plague will not come upon you. The Lord is speaking to his bride. He said, Come out of her, my people. Come out of that status quo. Hallelujah. And I heard a voice, another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye not receive her plagues. Everybody say, I'm coming out. Refuse it. Refuse it. You want to be a man of God? You better, some of you are attracted at the vanities. You, you spend day and night browsing church structures. You believe that is how to be in ministry. Hallelujah. Browsing church structures. And then you finish, you say, this is the car. And you gum it in your room and keep speaking it. The car that will carry me. Look, let me tell you something. Faith is not foolishness. Sit down and pay the price. And tell the Lord, search my heart. There are tendencies. I don't know how it will be the day I see 500 members. Who are loyal to you and can open up their spirit. The price of consecration. You cannot want to live like any other person. I say it with all humility. You will not find me around just gallivanting around. You say, what are you doing? Say, today is a happy day. I just feel like strolling. I'm at the season of my life. Where I am still at the preparation stage for an extraordinary life. The moment I finish preaching in Koinonia, I run back and lectures continue. I'm in the school of the spirit. No amount of manifestation will stop it. When I go home, I just get on my knees and I say, Lord, I thank you for what you did. I thank you for the mighty things that happened. And the Lord says, let's continue. Well done, but let's continue. The journey is still far. Everybody say, I choose to sanctify myself. 
say it, I choose to sanctify myself. There are many things that take our attention in the body of Christ. Computer games. Some of you is movies. You can watch movies from morning. You only stop to eat lunch. Immediately you finish. Which part? Which part? Did I watch that guy? Has, has the lady finally told him yes? Which part? You just come and sit down. The food will burn there. Later I say, off it for me, please. And they ask you, say, what do you want to become? Say, like Benny Hinn. Huh? Hallelujah. An extraordinary life. Listen, let me tell you. You must prepare for an extraordinary life. That's why oftentimes God will separate people away. He took Moses in the wilderness. He was alone. The price of consecration. Second Timothy 2. The last scripture. Let's run. Verse 19 to 21. The Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The next verse says, But in a great house, there are not only vessels, listen, not only vessels of gold and silver, but vessels of wood and clay, or some versions say earth. It says, Some are unto honor. That means it's your choice. There are vessels in a great house, but not every vessel is unto honor. He says, Some are unto honor, and some are unto what? Dishonor. Here's the condition. He says, If a man will purge, separate, consecrate, sanctify himself, he said That man will be a vessel unto honor, meet, fit, prepared, equipped for the master's use. Say, I'm a vessel unto honor. The price of consecration. The price of consecration. There are many of you, every time you hear the word price, you don't like it. Let's drink ice cream. Hallelujah. Do you have money? No, 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 no. Don't mention it. We, we hate anything that has to do with price. The Bible says, Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. It says, I reckon, I come to terms with this fact. That the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. That's what the Bible says. I reckon that the sufferings, that means there are temporary setbacks. The sufferings of this present time. What time? The time of your preparation. It's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. Verse 19 says, for the endless expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Number two, the price of revelation and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You want an extraordinary anointing? This is the second price. The price of revelation. The price of revelation and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You will never be able to live an extraordinary life. You can never have an extraordinary ministry. If you do not know the person of the Holy Spirit. And you do not have revelation. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 to 19. Paul began to pray and say for this cause. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom. And revelation in the knowledge of him. 18 says. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know. Enlightenment. You want to be great in life. You must go for knowledge. You must go for knowledge. You must go for knowledge. Are you hearing me? You must go for knowledge. You can't be great in ignorance. No. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. It says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Satan is only as powerful as our ignorance will allow him. Success is very predictable when you understand the laws that govern it. Knowledge. Many of us don't go for revelation. You don't contend. You must become a student of the Bible if you want an extraordinary anointing. Are you listening to me? You must become a student. 
not just a recipient. Many of us want things from God, but we are not serious with the word of God. How amiable are your word, O Lord. They are my meditation all day long. I'm obsessed with the word of God. I think the word of God. My conversations are governed after the word. And I'm not just doing it to preach. If you are just preparing sermons, people will know. You can't pretend it forever. He said, thy word, O God, have I hidden in my heart. This is how you prepare for an extraordinary life. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. You want an extraordinary life? Get back to the Bible. Go and sit down. Beyond morning devotion. My son, pay attention to my words. Proverbs 4. Incline your ears to my sayings. The Bible says, Do not let them depart from out of thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said they are life to those who find them. That means not everybody is interested. But they are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Hebrews 11 from verse 1. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He said for by it the elders obtained a good report. The Bible says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. The price of revelation. People who are extraordinarily anointed are men of the word. When you see a man who is anointed, when I talk of the word, I'm not talking of quoting the word. You will know they submit to the governing authority of the word. Being a student of the word is not just about talking it. There is a way you, you submit. Like you submit to a man. You are submitted to the authority of the word. Many of us read the word. But we have not submitted. To submit to the word of God means the word of God becomes the final opinion in your life. No matter what your argument is. When they bring the word of God, it ends every contention. John 5, 7, Jesus speaking. He says, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. Very important. His word must abide in you. Hallelujah. He says, you will bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Hallelujah. John 16 verse 13. Let's look at, I'm just giving you these scriptures. John 16 verse 13. Can you look at it very quickly? John 16. God is changing somebody tonight. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Listen, let me tell you something. Koinonia is called intimacy and partnership. The first thing is intimacy. You must contend for the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. It is in the knowledge of the Holy Spirit that you experience the gifts of the Spirit in your life. You cannot have the gifts of the Spirit and the anointing of the Holy Spirit independent of His presence. When He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into how many? That means there are many truths. He will guide you into all of them. It says, for he shall not speak of himself, but whosoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you. He will show you. Hallelujah. Very important. Let me show you something Jesus said, John 14 verse 10. John 14 verse 10, the second prize, the second key to an extraordinary anointing. I just have four of them. John 14 verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father? Now, this was Jesus doing extraordinary works. And these people were dumbfounded. And they wanted the secret of his power. Listen to what he was saying. He says, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you. He said, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. The Holy Ghost. That source and sustainer that lives in me. He said, he doeth the works. Every time you see a mighty man doing things, he's not the one doing it. There is somebody behind. I was not born like this. 
I wasn't born this way. That's my sister. My blood sister. I wasn't born this way. It takes a commitment and a determination. Go for revelation. It's too early to start looking for manifestation. You are at the stage of preparation. No matter how great you are, if you can become, no ma even if they make you a pastor of a church, don't let titles make you graduate yourself from the school of the spirit. Go and sit down. Pastor Femi is here. He's the senior pastor in Rema. And you come and sit down quietly. There are many people having his position now who start running. You must learn to sit down. Don't allow the applause that men are giving. Don't let it see. Don't let it take you away from the school of the spirit. Hear me tonight. There is more. It's time to eat because the journey is far. The angel told the prophet, he said, eat for the journey is far. He ate a little and he slept. The angel woke him again. He said, eat for the journey is far. And the Bible says he ate and he went in the strength of that bread, a 40 days journey. Number three, you want to see an extraordinary anointing in your life. The price of total obedience. Total obedience. Total obedience. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. For time's sake, we will not read it. Just read 5 to 10. Specifically verse 8. If you can project that verse 8. Sense the anointing of the Spirit in this place. Philippians 2 verse 8. The Bible says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became what? Obedient even unto death. Can I tell you something? There is a way you can be obedient that it will cost you. Are you listening to me? You must make up your mind whether you want to obey God or you want to obey men. It will cost you. It's called obedient unto death. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2. It says, It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day. That these blessings, uh, you know, I, I, will, I will exalt you, shall be above all nations. And this blessing shall come to you and overtake you. Then it begins to list downwards. Hallelujah. Very important. Matthew 7, the Bible says, He that heareth my words and doeth them. Not he that heareth my word and just dances. No. Obedience, 24 to 25. Matthew 7, 24 to 25. It's like to a wise man that builds his house upon the rock. I want to challenge you. Many of you, the reason why God is not working with you is because you don't have a heart to obey God. There are some of you here, the day God asks you to empty your account, you will bind and cast and lose and curse. And even write it as a prayer request. That voice that likes taking what God has given me. Obedience. Obedience. Everybody say obedience. Obedience will cost you. Obedience will cost you. They can give you a ministration somewhere. There are great ministrations that I have been given and the Lord says no. No. I just tell the protocol, no, I'm not going. I don't need to tell lies and say, okay, something, uh -uh. I, I'm not going to go. I remember one time, there was a pastor who invited me and I was praying. At the same time, there was an NCCF meeting in Delta. And for three days, I kept seeing myself there. And I had to call him because I had given him my word. They were so excited. They were preparing. I said, Pastor, I'm sorry to tell you, but the Lord wants me to be, the Lord wants me to be in Delta. The pastor was so sad. In his mind, he said, so because my church is now not as big as the state conference, that's why you are not coming. No, not at all. I paid my transportation. I went there. And at the end of it, when I got there, the Lord told me, you are not collecting an honorarium. When they bring it, bless it and give them back. So it was not just, it was not for money at all. Obedience. Hallelujah. I've shared it, well, it's, it's, not, it's not necessary, it's not something I'll say now. But somebody brought a huge gift for me one time, this year. 
And when he brought it, I just looked at him. And I told him, I said, mm -mm. as he was, he was trying to offer me, I said, no way. Already God had told me no. How many of you can say no when God says no? How many of you can say yes when God says yes? You are afraid of being different. You are afraid of being criticized. You are not ready for an extraordinary anointing. Because one day, God will tell you to declare his counsel. And the fear of what men will say. Let me tell you something. Extraordinarily anointed people are stubborn people. They are men that can defy things. I don't mean rebellious. Mary said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Someone met me one day and said, don't you think meeting once a week is too small for koinonia? I looked at the person and I said, back to sender. We don't do things just because we want to do it. No. As you see upon the mount, then you will do. If you do what God did not direct, you will defend it by yourself. Hallelujah. Obedience to the principles of the word. Obedience to the voice of the spirit. Many of us, when we started with God, one of the things that made our spiritual journey well was because we were living by the principles of God. Many of us are waiting for a word from God or a vision or a supernatural experience. But you are not obeying the truth of God's word that you are seeing. You want extraordinary finances. You are not tithing. You're not giving. You see somebody coming every week to give tithe. So, are, are you sure this guy is not pretending it? Are you the only one God is blessing? <laughs> the performance is for obedient people. The performance is not just for hearers. Make up your mind to obey the word. No matter what it will cost you. Hallelujah. Shibatakatabala. The last scripture there, Jeremiah 7.23. Jeremiah 7.23. God is separating people in this place to give them extraordinary anointings. He said, but this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. He said, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you. That it may be well with you. You want it to be well with you, it will be on the wings of obedience. Hallelujah. Years ago, after we came back from our crusade, it was a powerful time. PFN called us and they said, We want you to come and establish a branch of your ministry. They were ready to give us an auditorium and give us pastors to train. I was excited. I went to the Lord. The Lord just answered me and said, you will die. That was exactly what I repeated to the people. I said, the Lord said, I will die. Yeah. Obedience. It's difficult to obey when you are going to lose a lot. It's easy to obey when the obedience is on to gaining something immediate. Obedience. I choose to obey the word. I choose to live by its truth. Number four. There are many of you who have done these three. But the fourth key is what you have missed. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. Look at me. Everybody. How many of you have seen someone cutting a tree? Do you know that if you keep hitting that tree, it looks like nothing is happening. There is one final hit that will cut the tree. That was not the strongest hit. It was the most consistent one. Are you listening to me? Many of us, listen, and let me tell you something. One of the greatest lessons, or yes, one of the greatest lessons that the Lord has taught me in this life is that it pays to wait upon the Lord. Impatience has cheated many people out of the blessings of God in this life. 
We are in a hurry for everything. Everybody say the price of consistency. Consistently doing the same thing. Regardless of the outcome. Regardless of the outcome. You tithe and you don't see the blessing. You say, I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. I know that God is behind his word. Great people in life are those who have done certain things consistently. Galatians 6 verse 9. Do not be weary in well doing. He said, for we will reap in due season if we faint not. Do not be weary in well doing. He said, and let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap. Everybody say, I will reap. Yeah. Some of you have been coming for koinonia again and again. Six months, things have not changed. Do not be weary. If it is what you are doing well, don't be weary. The Bible says you will reap because you are sowing. The only way the devil can kill your harvest is to stop you from sowing. The Bible says, He that sows unto the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap life eternal. In 1 Kings 18, from verse 30 to 46, we will not read it, just write it down. 1 Kings 18, verse 30 to 46. The Bible says, Elijah prayed seven times. Everybody say seven times. If Elijah stopped at the sixth time, it would not work. He had to pray how many times? In fact, the Bible is so graphic. It says he prayed the first time. He sent the servant, go and check. The man said, nothing. Oh. Consistency is what separates ordinary people and extraordinary people. Consistency. Consistency. You pray no matter the outcome. You study the word no matter the outcome consistency. Many of us when we are at the edge you are at the verge of a breakthrough. That's when many of us give up. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5 you read from verse 1 to 4 but let's just focus on verse 4. 2 Kings 5 the Bible says the prophet had told Naaman, he said if you want to be clean, go and dip yourself. How many times? Seven times. Naaman was complaining and grumbling. It didn't change him. The Bible says, ah, I thought they were protecting it. Hallelujah. Naaman dipped himself how many times? Don't worry, just do your work, media. Seven times. Do you know what it means to dip yourself? Many of you were baptized. They dip you only once. Imagine a great man. He entered the water. He entered and came out. He asked the slave girl, how many? She said, one. Do it again. He entered, came out. At the fourth time, he was already embarrassed. He was looking like mud. God said seven times, Mr. Man, consistency. Consistency. There are many of you, you are looking for a prophet to prophesy to you. Nobody comes. God says, just continue doing what you are doing. That's the only prophetic word you need. Keep doing it. Pastor Chris will say what? How, how does he say it? Keep speaking it. Don't stop saying it. Be consistent. Some of you start preparing for an extraordinary life. And impatience will just cancel it out. How, and you know, see, it's dangerous because when you start a journey, you get to a point where you are in the middle. You, it's too far for you to go back and then you can't reach there. Many of us start the journey and you go back. You are traveling to Abuja. You've now gotten to Abuja Kaduna Expressway. And you say, Kai, this journey is too far. I went to Meduguri on, on road. I slept and woke up I don't know how many times. I asked the driver how many more hours. He said six or seven. I said what? We've been on this journey since. I had to sleep on the road. But did that mean we were missing the way? See, that you have to wait does not mean you made a wrong decision. Continue. John 6 verse 15. I mean, Joshua 6 verse 15. The crossing of Jericho. Joshua 6 verse 15. The Bible says, on that seventh day, you can imagine, 
to throw a big wall. God gave them an instruction. They went round once. The people in Jericho were wondering, who are these madmen? They had to die to themselves to know that whatever God tells you to do, it will work. On the seventh day, they now started going one, two, three, four, five. Madness. Six. At the seventh time, they blasted the trumpet. And the Bible tells us, see, the wall of Jericho did not fall down. It sank. Because the Bible says on the wall, five chariots could stand on it. So even if it falls, it will become another wall again. Sank. John 20, verse 11. When I was preparing these notes, I just put all these scriptures. And the Holy Spirit told me, no, there's one more. My people must hear. John 20 verse 11. The Bible says when Jesus resurrected, all the disciples came. And the one Jesus loved checked the tomb. And they saw that Jesus was not there. They checked once and they ran away. But the Bible says Mary Magdalene stayed there. Everybody said consistency. And when she checked again, suddenly she saw an angel. Consistency. Consistency requires patience. It requires uncommon patience. It requires grace. Hallelujah. Many people in ministry, they start and then God is telling them just be consistent. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Teach your message. It may not be popular, but don't compromise. If, do you know that is impatience and lack of consistency that makes people to derail from the things of God and get into witchcraft. They are looking for fast, fast fame, fast everything. They want a cheap fast. Fast cheap. One of the greatest revelations that God has put in me is the beauty of patience. I can wait. I've killed hurry from my life. I can wait. Some of you are in a hurry for everything. And this is your own becoming. You are in a hurry to, you want digital hearing God now. Let you just say, thank you Jesus. And God just begins to talk. Five minutes later, he has finished, you say, I give you praise. Unfortunately, his system is not like that. They that wait. Hallelujah. Very important. Consistency. These four things are the things that I practice in my own life every time. And I'm determined not to stop it. This last one is probably new to many people. You are just seeing the power of consistency. Consistency. When you want to build a house, the workers come every day. They put three blocks today. Tomorrow they come again. They add four blocks. I was checking the database of Koinonia and I found out we are getting close to 5,000. The database, people who have been blessed, who have come to worship. I remember when we started it, 20 people, new people, 40 people, 20 people today, 100 people, 60 people, 400 people. Consistency. Everybody say consistency. I play a bit of keyboard. When I started, I was fairly consistent. And then I stopped being consistent. Do I like keyboard? Yes. Am I blessed by it? Yes. Can I play like I can? No. Why? You are not consistent. You see why many people are not consistent in God's presence. That's why they don't know when God speaks a thing. Consistency. Consistency. That's why we have a lot of people who are not stable with spiritual things. You run to this man of God today, Abuja or Lagos or wherever, you say, man of God, my life must change. He said, come and sit down under the word. Two weeks later, I say, man of God, it has not changed though. He said, just continue. He said, oh, let me find one that can give this thing to me sharp, sharp. Many of us have entered into all kinds of things. All kinds of things. 
Everybody say, I will continue in the things that I've started. Consistency. Let's do a quick review. Number one, the price of consecration. The price of consecration. Number two, the price of revelation. Consecration will kill you. You will take up the agenda of God and forget about your own agenda. There are some of you who finish service. You want to run and go for work. God will say, uh uh-uh. For you, you are exempted. The normal law is to look for a job. You, you are exempted. You are a lady, you finished. You are just planning. Thank God I will get married. God will say, "Uh uh-uh. You are going to marry in the next three years. Give me these three years of your life. Say, back to sender. I've always known. Enemy of progress. Now that is my breakthrough. It's my turn to shine. Consecration. You must die to yourself. You can't do everything. There are many of us, every program, secular or Christian, you are there. Something happens in TJ Palace, you come. You are happy. You just sit down there. Later, I say, Kai, it's time for fellowship. Let me run. And you, you wonder why your ears is as if they put cotton wool inside. You can't hear God. You always hear nonsense. Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark. If you lie down close to the ark, you will hear the voice of God. An extraordinary life. I'm saying this today because it will happen by the Spirit. He and I will be an extraordinary ministry. I won't be. I have come to the end of my soul. Take over, Jehovah, I have touched the end of my life. Listen, don't be in a hurry in your life. Stop following the plan that people have carved for themselves to define success. You will fall into a ditch you may not recover from. Receive the blueprint. When you see your life becoming strange, it's a sign that there is an uncommon call upon your life. Enjoy it. It's working for others, but when God gets to you, you will train others and raise them, but you, God will say, sit down. There is a reason. You are coming to the end of yourself. I remember one man who God instructed and said until he buys 15 cars for people before he buys one for himself. At the end of the third card, the wife told him, See, I'm going to leave you. I've been keeping quiet about this thing. He's blaming me. Because people started embarrassing the woman. They say something is wrong with your husband and you are a foolish woman. You won't go and do something about it. Fifteen! That was the instruction God gave him. This guy will walk like an elephant and carry money and buy a car. A Jimmy's mother of blessed memory. Before she went to be with the Lord, she was preparing to buy a nice car for herself. And then the Lord gave her an instruction that she should buy a brand new Toyota Corolla and go and give one of her junior staff. How many people will slap you when you do that kind of thing? Ladies, if your husband comes and says, Honey, come and give me a hug first and a kiss. And you feel, say, what, what is it? I can't wait. He said, God has spoken. He said, Alright, sit down. Now, we are going to evacuate this house, said the Spirit of God. The house that you built with your own money. They will call you from the village, quit. They will say, come back home. Before you come home, they are prepared what will recover you from that mindset. They will say, just drink this before we start talking. Because you are not well. Mad men are the ones who have changed this world. Uncommon people. Uncommon people. Uncommon people. Some of you have to trek long distances to come for Koinonia every week. But you are determined. Consistency. Go for revelation. Stop doing cheap ministry. You will start insulting great people. Don't join that group. Stay with the spirit until you catch a substance of life. When you have a message, I promise you the world will hear you. Forget about money. Chase God, you will find other things. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom. 
seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all other things. A time will come if somebody pays you one million per week, he has insulted you. You hold on. If you can endure, he that endures to the end, not stop at the middle. If you start a race, a marathon, and you're running, assuming you're supposed to go around Zaria, you started from ABU, you are almost coming, and you are at, you are at um, energy research, and you collapse there. Will they say, hey, yeah, we understand. We saw your effort. We have been watching you. When they list the names of those who are disqualified, they will put your name there. So the person who just started from here to aviation and stopped, and you, you have now been put in the same class. Everybody say, I'll be consistent. Say, I'll be consistent. Pray in tongues. It's too early to pray and start saying, oh, I'm looking. It's something... <clears throat> Koinonia is where we are today because we have been consistent. For four years, God trained us. We're coming every night. People were sitting on the floor. Pastor Williams and his wife with the kids sometimes will come all the way from Sabo. Married people, they will come and sleep in the students' hostel. They are looking for something. Tomorrow now, somebody will see him and the wife will say, How are we sure? This woman said, she's just chopping. Reaping where she didn't sow. Somebody spoke against um, Catherine Ma Maria Woodward Ita. She said, the Lord judge you. The person's tongue became like banana. Until he wrote an official letter of apology. And she slapped it back. Hallelujah. I was told, was it Oedeko or, or Adeboe? That somebody saw the things that they were doing and the woman just hissed and trivialized it. Oyedeko. That woman was barring for I don't know how many years from the story. One time she went to a prophet searching for solution. The man wanted to pray for her and he said, Stop. God is revealing to me that you have offended a great man of God. This is what is responsible. She called the name. The woman packaged a seed. Don't worry. Those who are talking against you will sow into your life for recovery from their madness tomorrow. Just continue. Anytime you see a great man, I was, I was speaking to my sister, you know, she was over at my place and I was talking to them. And I was telling them something. I said, one of the greatest things I've learned in life, listen to me. See, if you try to defend yourself, hear me, you are, God, God doesn't have anything to do again. Are you listening to me? There are many of us. They just, you just pray for five hours. You want to explain to everybody. Ah, ah. Be convinced about this. At every point of your life, those who love you are greater than those who don't. Don't lose touch with those who truly love you and be focusing on a few people. Out of the twelve, it was only Judas who didn't love Jesus, not eleven. Jesus focused on the people who loved him. Some of us want, who loves me? Do you like me? Do you don't like me? Do you don't like me? You say, why now? Let me, let me make you like me. Ah. Extraordinary people are lonely people. Lonely people. Until they arrive. And then everybody will see Moses was alone. They didn't come for visit for him. They didn't send any bounty from Egypt. They thought he was dead. But when God was done with him, he became a sign and a wonder. Are you ready to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. We are going to cry to the Lord. The Lord is calling you into an extraordinary anointing. Into an extraordinary anointing. We are going to pray for just five minutes. And we will round up. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Everyone hold your hands together and let's pray in tongues for just one minute. There's a realm. A realm of the extraordinary. 
the realm of champions. That's where world changers dwell. It's a mountain where the eagles dwell. Not where the birds are. Not where the chickens are. It's a pedestrian. It's a plane in the spirit. It's the place for mighty men. It's the place for great men. Writers of history. History makers. World shakers. Ambassadors indeed. Men whom the earth is not worthy of. Come on, pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, I refuse an ordinary life from today. I make a vow and a commitment. I will not be ordinary. Go ahead. Not in business. Not in leadership. Not in my job. Not in ministry. I contend for an extraordinary anointing. I refuse to be average. Not in ministry. An extraordinary healing ministry. An extraordinary deliverance ministry. An extraordinary preaching ministry. An extraordinary apostolic ministry. Pray. An extraordinary prophetic ministry. Extraordinary evangelical ministry. Pray. I will be an extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary businessman. Tell yourself. I am destined to be great. My parents may not know it. Pray. The people in my community may not know it. But I'm determined. I refuse. I refuse the ordinary. I refuse the ordinary. My name will be written in the sands of time that I did terrible things in righteousness. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray all of these 14. Grace to pay the price for consecration. Grace to pay the price for revelation and intimacy. Grace to pay the price for obedience. Grace to be consistent. You know where you have been, we have been faulting. Lift your voice and pray. Grace, oh God. Grace. Grace, 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 grace to separate myself from the cares of this world, grace not to entangle myself with the lusts and appetites that hinder the anointing, grace, lift your voice and cry, grace, to live a sanctified life. Grace. To live a life that is set apart. Grace. Grace. Pay the price. Pay the price. Lamentations 327. It is good that a young man bear his youth, his, his, his yoke in his youth. Pray for grace. Lift your voice and pray. Grace for revelation. Grace for revelation. The Lord grace to be a student of the world. I will buy books. I will buy tape. Day and night. Day and night. I will sit with the world. Day and night. I will sit with the world. Pray for intimacy with the Holy Ghost. Tell yourself, Holy Spirit. I'm tired of pretending like I know you. I want to enter a tangible experience. I want to hear your voice. I want to walk with you. Koinonia. I long for that intimacy. 
pray for grace to obey. Lift your voice and pray for grace. Grace to obey. Lord, I've been disobedient. Lift your voice and pray. Grace to obey. No matter what it will cost you, you will be different. They will mock you. They will criticize you. Every great man follow that path. You are not the first. You will not be the last. Enjoy it. Pass through it. Enjoy it. Pass through it. When you become great, your life will explain the process. Pass through it. Make up your mind to obey God. Be uncompromising. No matter what it will cost you. Finally, pray for consistency. Consistency. Some of you stop doing the things that brought you to this realm. That's why you've not gone higher. Lift your voice and pray. Consistency. I will stop fasting. I will stop fasting. I will stop praying. No. No. Nothing will make me stop fasting. Nothing will make me stop praying. I will stay with the word. I will read books. I will watch videos. I will spend time in worship. I will build myself. I will develop myself. I will learn from great people who have gone ahead of me. I will give my eyes no sleep until I do the things that will move me forward. No matter the commendation, I will let it get into me. I make up my mind to be consistent. To be consistent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a secret. This is a secret. There is nothing mysterious about it. An extraordinary anointing. Hallelujah. An extraordinary anointing. This is the secret to an extraordinary anointing. Lift your hands in one minute. I want to pray with you. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray that grace will come upon you and make you walk in these realms. For many of you, this grace will come upon you in a mighty way. In a mighty way. I want you to carry an anointing that will destroy spiritual laziness. As I count seven, that grace will come. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Take it now. 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 I release it. Receive it. That fire. Come for Shaketa. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Let it come upon you. Grace. Extraordinary ministry. Extraordinary anointing. Take it like fire. Holy Ghost, move in power. Move in power. Outside. Outside. Let the power of God move. Great. Let the fire burn. Let it ignite you. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Be separated. Let the desire for the ordinary die. Let the desire for the ordinary receive it. It will come upon you like rain. Like rain. Like rain. Take the take of photo For an extraordinary anointing. For an extraordinary life. Set apart. Set apart. May you command results. May you command results. Results that can be reproduced again. May 
May you see the power of God in your ministry. May you see the power of God in your life. I bless you with a hunger for spiritual things. A hunger that will separate you from vain things. You've not given your life to Jesus Christ. Listen. Some of you, this is where it starts. Tonight, God is calling men to be serious. Hear me, inside and outside. There are some of you, every time you hear the word of God like this, you don't take what the man of God is saying seriously. God has been speaking to you. God has been speaking. Don't let today pass you by. There are some of you who gave your life to Christ, but truly you are not serious with God. You are not serious with his word. You are not serious with his life. The things of God are not, you are, you are not on fire. Tonight God is calling you. I'm going to count one to five. And I want you to come and stand here. You've never given your heart to the Lord quickly. One, come and stand. God is speaking to you. Nobody will force you once I count five. Just remain on your seat. Two, enough of this ordinary life. There is a higher realm. There is an extraordinary anointing. Inside or outside. Let, it, let the distance not be too far. Young or old. God brought you here tonight. God brought you here tonight. Some of you are sitting. The Holy Ghost is telling you come out. The Holy Ghost is telling you you are the one. You are the one the preacher is talking about. The Holy Ghost is talking to you. Quickly please. Let's save time. The Holy Ghost has been speaking to you. Be serious with your spiritual life. Take the things of God. You have a great destiny. Many of us listen, but we are yet to make a, de a decision. Keep coming. God bless you. One minute quickly. Don't let anybody mock you. Don't let people tell you you are over spiritual. That's nonsense. The people who are saying that will be failures in life. Guaranteed. Don't be ashamed to be on fire. That's the way great people are made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you in front here, I congratulate you for coming. Some of you are making your decision. Sister, you will, you will enter a level of hunger and fire. Today is your day. It's God's time to visit you in a mighty way. Hallelujah. We're out of time. Listen, let me encourage you. Don't do what you are doing now emotionally. Please. Some of you will do it now when you go outside and you see your unbelieving people who have no respect for the things of God. You get ashamed. Ashamed? Let me pray for you. All of you in front here, if you can, lift your hands up and let me pray with you. I love you. Thank you for coming. You are not ashamed. I tell you, this will be the beginning of an authentic spiritual journey. I'd like you to shout it like your life depends on it. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I'm tired of going on this journey by myself. This night, I make a genuine commitment to walk with Jesus. Forgive me my sins. I receive the remission of sins. From today, I'm a child of God. I'm saved. Put your fire in my spirit. Make my life meaningful. Give me an extraordinary life. Use me for your glory. I denounce sin and Satan. I break free from associations that keep me in the former life. I declare that I'm a child of God in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for these ones. They have come to indicate their interest to be part of your kingdom and to be very serious with you. My God, I pray that from today, let their lives change. Let something remarkable happen. Let habits be broken. In the name of Jesus. 
the Lord forgives you. We free you from any guilt. I set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. No matter what has happened in the past, past is past. Hallelujah. The new creation in Christ. You will start again with the Lord in Jesus' name. Now, tomorrow, listen. Tomorrow evening, by five. Please look at me. By five. All right? Pastor Jakes will be meeting with all of you. Please try. Try as much as possible. Just at the chapel book stand. Just come there and find somewhere and wait there. Pastor Jakes will meet with you people. We are going to follow you up. For those who are not filled with the Holy Ghost, we will get you filled with the Holy Ghost. You can get some of the messages with the media. Some of you who don't have our messages, they are all free. We don't sell messages for now. Get them and sit down with them and let them build you. God bless you. Please follow the ushers. They'll have your details right now. Congratulations. Just give me two minutes and we're out of here. Those worshipping with us for the first time, please, I'd like you to leave your seat and come quickly. We honor you. We thank you for coming. Very quickly, very quickly. Those worshipping with us for the first time, if this is your first time of being here, we love you. We salute you. Please leave your seat and come out here. I have a prayer and a blessing for you. Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Koinonia, celebrate them. Whether you are inside or outside, just make haste to be here. Thank you, young and old. Don't be afraid. We have a prayer for you. You'll never be the same. Thank you for coming. God brought you by himself. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Put together by Eternity Network International. I assure you that your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. A fire will come into your spirit. You will change. Everyone around you will know you are changed. May you experience the goodness of God in your life. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. Thank you because you brought my brothers and sisters. Thank you because you have visited them tonight. Let this be the beginning of an authentic, never-ending spiritual journey. I bless you with a hunger for the things of the Spirit. I bless you with a hunger for the Word. I command breakthrough in any area of your life you're trusting God for. Anyone who is sick among you, be healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Please just follow the ushers. They'll have your details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Hallelujah. I appreciate them coming on. Hallelujah. Let's take the following announcement. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia underscore ENI.